I'm Andrew the MFG Crow, and welcome to the New American Manufacturing Renaissance. I got into a lot of trouble and manufacturing pretty much found me. And I ended up, you know, making some bad decisions and, and you know, running the streets. It wasn't until I kind of hit a brick wall and I was like, you know, I'm tired of this, like this isn't sustainable, that I just put out the word like to people that I need a job. I never knew that this amazing industry existed. I didn't know what went into it. I had no idea you know, how things were made. I didn't really think about it too much because, you know, single mom doing the best that she could, working a bunch of jobs, we couldn't afford a lot. And um, I go into this manufacturing plant, I guess you could call it. You know, before I took the tour, you go into an office and there was this old white gentleman named Donnie Ogle, bald headed, pretty intimidating. And he sat down and just had a conversation with me first. And he said, you know, you're definitely not a machinist, but I'm gonna give you this job on the saw and I see that there's something in you that really wants an opportunity and needs an opportunity. And I can tell that you're gonna do something great with it. So if you wanna be a machinist, stick with me and we'll get you there. So I felt like I was, you know, not just a felon and teenage father anymore. I felt like I was important to America and our troops and like, you know, our safety and I was doing my part. So that's what got me here and that's what kind of like, you know, made me stay. <music> Um, here in St. Louis, I had an opportunity to leave from industry and come into education. And I got into education and I started running the advanced manufacturing uh, department at the local college. And I saw a lot of glaring holes. At the same time, I saw that even in trade shows and um, you know, in different shops from Illinois to Florida that I've worked in, there's not a big presence of women and not a big presence of minorities. And I started to see that, you know, it wasn't for lack of trying, it was just a lack of, you know, a bridge that had been built between these communities that hadn't been sewn into by a long time. And then manufacturing that hadn't really been doing the work in these communities because we had so many people that wanted these jobs that like they didn't really have to do too much work because the network of people that you know looked like them were were plenty right i could tell that something needed to be done to build a bridge a between these communities and b make it strong and authentic to the point where we can rebuild american manufacturing let me be the bridge that brings these things together. You know, somebody has to go first. Somebody's got to lead, right? Um, last year, with the help of, you know, industry friends, definitely Mastercam has been, you know, huge. AMT, you know, came through for me. I conceptualized the, the tour of bringing the industry manufacturing mixer and the community events that I was doing under one banner. Let's call it the New Amer American Manufacturing Renaissance teaching the community how to get these skills and where to go with them and why they're important. And then teaching the industry how to go back and reach back to the community, hire them, recruit them, and more importantly, retain them and keep them in their jobs. For the first time ever, um, we have up to five different generations in a shop at one time, in the workforce at one time. People are retiring a lot later and then people are entering into the workforce earlier than they typically would because four-year universities aren't looking like a viable option uh, anymore. So 18-year-olds, 16-year-olds are trying to start their careers right now. I had a student that uh, I actually show his video on the tour and kids connect with him a lot. This young man uh, came from an area that drug use is really, really high, even in the high school. And he was a junior in high school and he saw one of my YouTube videos about the next Elon Musk being from the hood and it really inspired him to be able to do something. And he would make, he was into knives and he would make knives uh, by hand at home. And he would just sell them around the neighborhood. They were like nice handmade, cool knives. He saw my video and saw an opportunity to take this knife situation to the next level. Got uh, graduated early, enrolled in our program. So from spring to October, he would come up to the campus every day 
and I ran the work study program where kids could run the machines and make real parts for industry and make money. And eventually he talked me into being able to hire him before he started classes. So then he became my best worker and he wasn't just watching how the machines run or just doing a task. He was following my, my guidance and he was watching how the machine was programmed, trying to make things faster, looking at fixtures. And I could tell that this kid was different. And by the time he graduated, his knife business now does $15,000 a month. He bought his own Haas machine. He runs it out of his garage and he's hired two different people that he grew up with. And that's, that's what American manufacturing is about. This is how you break generational curses. You can get in early, you can get in quick, and you can get back what you put in. He didn't have to go through the route that I went through, and, and here he is, and, and this could be you in 18 to 24 months. Genius is equally distributed and opportunity is not. And let me be the example for the industry and for the people that, you know, where you are right now isn't where you're gonna be. And if you have the platforms to show what you're good at and be able to express that, then it's the tide that lifts all boats. So if you are a genius and you feel like you don't have a platform, manufacturing can be it for you.